right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Undefined. I am very excited for this episode because I am with John Flansburg of They Might Be Giants. How are you, John? Woo! Um, I'm doing good. Um, uh, I've been in the studio for the last couple of days, and they were really long days and very... Oh. Um, uh, I'm, I'm slightly crispy. I'm a little bit exhausted because uh, when we do studio sessions, even if they're not even if they're only nine hours long or like, or sometimes, sometimes they're like, like yesterday was closer to like 12, wow. but like, uh, even, even if they're, even if they're just regular work days, there's something about having to concentrate all day and listen to music really hard all day long. That's really, um, it really takes a lot out of you. It's a, it's a, it's a different kind of exhaustion than doing a show. It's a different kind of mm-hmm. exhaustion than just, you know, having a, a, just working at something for a long time. Cause it's just, it's kind of a it's kind of a mental exhaustion like you just you just kind of can't think any harder about stuff at a certain point so i'm a little uh, i'm a little crispy right now but uh i'm, I'm fine I'm, a, I'm it was very productive but i'm actually quite feeling quite upbeat about the way things are moving forward Wow, and I was going to ask you about that because I saw on your social media you posted those pictures of uh, you and Linnell in the studio. So I wanted to ask how that was yeah. going, but I, I'm excited. Is well, everyone was shocked. That, everyone yeah. was shocked that we uh, that we're so unshaven, but that's uh, you know, we just sort of slipped into uh, total uh, laziness in in that department. You you have time off right now. In between, you start the next leg of the flood tour. Is that it starts up again in March, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing those, those, the, the shows in March actually are, were shows that were added on the other side of co- the COVID thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll, those will be like, uh, like up until now, we've actually been doing these makeup shows that were all sold out in early 2020 and we're just doing them now. So it's, it's been a very weird uh, ride. Like the, every, you know, everybody, everybody's had a weird COVID experience, but ours was, we, we basically, you know, when COVID, when the lockdown happened, we were about to do something like 40 sold out shows and it was and having to reschedule them over and over and over and over again was just this very crazy enterprise. But we're finally getting some of them on the off the books and yeah, we're very I happy mean, about yeah, you, you've definitely had uh, a long show. I even saw like, the, wasn't it the first show back you ended up getting in a car accident and, and, and you broke your rib and then like you were I did. I broke. I, yeah, no, I broke. I broke a lot of ribs. I broke, uh, you know most of my ribs basically um that was uh you know it it was that was bad that was was really bad Um, i was in the hospital for a long time i was in the hospital for a a week and change and uh and i was you know just basically bedridden for over a month so uh it was uh you know i would advise anybody not to get hit by a drunk driver it's i you know it's funny like i i I never thought about drunk drivers until I got hit by a drunk driver, and and uh, and now I'm now I really uh, I really resent drunk drivers. Yeah, it's not it's not yeah I feel like you know car accidents it's not those things like you don't think about it until it happens. Like I was in a car accident, still like facing like repercussions on my shoulder, and I have to get chiropractic care, and it's definitely yeah. so I know. How yeah, that no, can it, be. it's 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 annoying. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling better and you're able to get back on the road. And I wanted to uh, ask you, so like, because there was such a long delay of this tour with COVID and then the accident, and now that you're back to playing shows again, has it kind of changed the way that you've thought about and like put in process in the live shows? Because you guys have been performing for a while. um, And I wanted to know how has that experience been different now that all of these kind of changes and hurdles? Well, you know, I mean, our our show's pretty physical, uh, you know, for us. I mean, even, even though even though we're just, you know, we're not, we're not doing anything that extreme, but uh, it's, um, I, I don't think we haven't, we haven't made it, I haven't made it any easier on myself, I guess this is probably the, the, the truth of it. I just, you know, mm-hmm. I just try to figure out how to, you know, get back in, you know, the whole, my, all my efforts have just been about getting back into the shape enough to, to do the shows that, that we need to do. Um, uh, it's, it's a little bit weird when you when you uh, when you when you break your ribs because it so directly affects your breathing, um, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so uh, and breathing and singing and breathing are kind of like the same thing. So uh, I'm, uh, but 
things are things are things are together like it's I'm, I'm very happy with the show the big the big thing that's been happening with the show is that we've taken on a three-piece horn section so we're now an eight-piece band and we're doing a lot of things uh with the flood show as well as beyond the repertoire from flood uh, mm -hmm. which is actually most of the show uh that that really incorporate these um very virtuosic horn players and it's it's yeah. something very different than what we've done in the past. I mean, we've, we've always had a great band behind us and, um, you know, they, they're really talented musicians, but um, having this extra layer of, of musicality with the horns has made it um, really fun. And uh, I think, and kind of, it, I, you know, just, I can't take credit for their, you know, their facility and it's, I, I'm just, like everybody in the audience just kind of, you know, a little bit agape at like how awesome their sound is because it's just, uh, they're like killer musicians. We're working with uh, this guy, Mark Pender, who's the trumpet player on mm -hmm. Conan O'Brien and everybody would oh, wow. recognize him. You know, he's like, yeah. And so he's, he does a, a, a bunch of like so, solo turns and there's improv stuff in the show. And, you know, when you see it, it's just like, it's just something to see, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, yeah. it's really, it's really cool seeing like a, seeing, you know, musicians really uh, mm -hmm. at the you know at the top of their their field kind of do stuff. You know, it's just it's just fun. It's cool. Yeah, I saw you guys did a live stream back in I think October of the show, and it was just like the horns. It's incredible, whole new layer. I'm actually going to the show in Orlando on March 17th. Oh right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to kind of give that a shout out because you guys are playing. Not only you're playing Orlando, you're playing a few shows that are sold out, like Point of Vedra, and I think Fort Lauderdale sold out. But you're doing Orlando, St. Petersburg. Yep, my mom's coming to St. Petersburg, so everybody, <laughs> be be cool. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, what is there's one other? Oh, wait, Fort Lauderdale, St. Pete, Orlando, and then I think Point of Vedra. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? Quite a major. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I've oh, never okay. Been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I certainly don't know how to pronounce it. That's yeah. the, that's the town with all the 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 people rolling cigars on the sidewalks. I think so. Yeah, it's funny. I got um an email from the St. Augustine Amphitheater, which is like kind of in that area. And, and, and I guess they collaborated with the Point of Vedra and I saw the show advertised there. I was like, whoa, that's a little far for me, but I'm, I got my ticket for the Orlando show as soon as it went oh, yeah. on sale. I, I have excited. no, I have no sense of Florida geography at all. Like, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. Miami, you know, whatever it's all, it's all Florida to me. Yeah. It's, it's all just a big, <laughs> big yeah. mess. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. super excited to see the show in person. And I was going to ask about the set list. So how do you manage um, the, the set list between the flood and the non-flood? Because unlike, I mean, some album shows, you guys don't play it in order most nights. You play it shuffled no. and then you mix it with the new songs from book. And then you also play like a, a wide assortment of songs from your catalog. How do you guys come up with that? Well, it's 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 very much like a like a puzzle in the sense of like it's it's a lot like a crossword puzzle like you just you're just trying to figure out how to fit all these things together. Um, I mean, there's some really simple. You know, different performers have different takes on what they need to do to bring what they want to bring to the stage and how they want to make their show work for me personally, I feel like a lot of rock shows are actually kind of boring like even though they're like even though i might really like the style of the the songwriter or the style of the musicians and the and the music that they're playing i i'm i often find myself go, you know i've gone to, i don't go to a ton of shows uh in general but i i hate this thing where you go to a show and you're like you're you're five or six songs into the show and you realize every song is going to kind of sound the same at a certain point and it's you know and so by design we try to change up like the tempos try to change up the approaches of the songs and almost create as much contrast over the course of the show as possible like there's some extremely quiet songs in the show there's some extremely loud parts of the show and there's all every kind of you know, tempo idea that you could imagine. And there's a lot of solo turns. So it's all about um, kind of creating an evolution of within the set, like we'll, you know, we'll do like five songs and it'll start out and it'll just kind of accelerate and kind of crescendo. And then 
we'll start over again. So there's like a little bit of a calculation in terms of how we pace it to just hold people's interest, but it's really important to us to actually hold people's interest. Yeah, and, and I think from the show that I watched, you guys did a great job of doing that. And like, I love the concept of mixing the flood songs with the other songs too. So it's just like kind of an unexpected turns and like with the horns and everything, like it sounds so good. Like I'm thinking about when you guys did, uh, let me tell you about my operation with the horns. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, that yeah. song just with the horn section, it just adds a whole new element to it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's the... um that's the, the, it, it's 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 quite a show you know i mean it's 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 almost it's interesting because we've been doing a rock show for so long you mm-hmm. just kind of are used to what you can kind of get out of that and it's it's a lot of times when people take on horn sections it's kind of just layered on top of what they're already doing mm-hmm. it's nice to to be working be have enough material that we can do these songs that really feel horn driven and uh yeah, it's it's I'm I'm really I'm really pleased and sort of psyched. I mean, a part of the thing about doing these flood shows is that because all these shows sold out, mm-hmm. um, we had we were kind of touring it. I mean, I don't want to you know nobody. I mean, people. I guess some people want to hear everything about the bit the business of the music side of the, the business side of things. But um, I love it. I find it fascinating. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I'll I'll let you in on a little secret. A lot of a lot of times when people are touring, they are they are very slowly going ever so slightly a little bit more broke than when they started. So it's not like a given that you're making money on the road. Um, but one of the nice things about selling out all these shows in advance is that we knew we were going to be making, you know, a good a, a good profit by the end of it. Like we were in the black. Like it was mm-hmm. it was, and that was like quite a relief. And. Um, it have allowed it sort of afforded us the ability to even to think about bringing on the horns because it's like you know it's three more guys it's 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 mm-hmm. definitely more dough um and uh but it's worth it and it's and it just changes things up for us it makes everybody super excited to be there yeah i can't wait to uh experience it in person i'm, I'm very excited for the show next month great um, thanks so much for coming out oh no problem yeah i i when you announced the photo shows i was i was very excited so i I can't wait to uh, hear that in person. So I had another question. This is kind of more about the um, the art, um, not just the songs, but the art itself. Because I know that you're you're a big graphic design guy, right? And you went to school, yeah, went to yeah. Pratt. And yep. I know that you are heavily involved with the art creation of um, not just the albums, but like the marketing, the social media. I am a digital arts major. I do marketing. I find that all very uh-huh. fascinating. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to ask you about how do you kind of come up with the concepts for your music and your albums? Because I feel like each of your albums, they have, I feel like the visual components that surround it are almost as strong as the music, whether it's like the videos or the posters or the advertisements, the records itself. Uh, you guys put a lot of labor and love into that kind of physical aspect. Do you kind of come up with the concepts of what you're going to do before the music comes or after? Like, I want to hear more about uh, your creative process in that because I find it very interesting. Well, there's a lot of parallels. I mean, even just what we're talking about, like how to put the show together and have it be really like dynamic, which is to say like the the, the true definition of dynamic, which means like kind of going between extremes, like going from, you know, go, traveling the full range of possibilities. Um, early on, John and I made a lot of sort of kind of just uh, quick decisions about how to, to to be in a band like we didn't want to open for other people because we felt like if we didn't open for other people then we could what we would do would be more self-defined but it also that's like a much slower road professionally we didn't put our photos on our out we didn't want to we didn't want to put our photos on our albums we didn't want to have it be our music be uh caught up in our faces and our personas uh because again it just seemed like if you want to kind of, uh, if you want to, if you want to create a musical universe that's sort of separate and lets people's imaginations run free, it, it might be more interesting to not have it be caught up in uh, uh, a, a persona or a public image or a face. Um, I mean, I, I guess, I guess it's, it's hard to say how how true that is i think you know people also get very caught up in they get very caught up in biographies and personas and things like that and but we just want to take it kind of in a different direction um so 
once we had liberated ourselves from the idea of having our faces and photographs of us on the on album covers it basically was like well it's all the other things in the world of graphic design are available so um you know there's a lot of great illustrators there's a lot of great historical photographs there's a lot of great uh you know graphic design possibilities and you can kind of see uh you know see me sort of ping-ponging around there there are a lot of great bands that have really strong graphic identities and and the it seems like the general thing is to have the uh, kind of a through line like have it one album kind of connect to the next i don't know why but from the beginning we kind of approached each album like its own project and that's um that's you become kind of a challenge i mean i remember when after we did i guess after we did join us which had which had this pink hearse sort of day glow big monster truck hearse on the cover and it was yeah. very much like kind of a pop art illustration thing i love my that thought was, my thought was like we really whatever we do next we've got it we really should try to figure out how to do it with like a photograph like we just can't if we do anything with an illustration it's going to seem very repetitive and, and and it would be really hard to top because the cover of join us is really really bold so when we did nanobots we actually found a collage artist who did stuff it, it ended up being a um you know a painting that had been sort of manipulated in, in uh in collage oh god it's oh it's a it's a very famous painting it's actually mm -hmm. if you buy the it's by uh, uh angra ingra i-n-g-r-e-s it's a spanish name i can't pronounce it properly but um uh if i i was at the met recently and uh the metropolitan museum of art and there if you buy their big catalog book of everything in the met mm -hmm. the cover image is the same painting that's on the cover of nanobots and I, I have to say like i feel a little bit like it's totally in the public domain there's no there's no owning it but um yeah. but i have to say i felt like oh i hope we don't get in trouble like you know that <laughs> people find out that we stole that image but uh but we're we're safe yeah, you know, that's good. It's in the public domain. I love that cover too. That's so funny. I would have totally seen that book and be like, oh my gosh, it's the nanobots. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, uh, but um, but yeah, the graphic design stuff, it's it's just something that I've been, you know, interested in my whole life and, and I just mm -hmm. try to make the most of it. But it's it's kind of uh, at this, you know, I always keep my eye out for new illustrators and try to find mm -hmm. new new ways to make new looks. Um, but you know. Yeah, it's it's a it's a cool world, and it's it's definitely you know everything's changing very, you know keeps on changing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I um really got into your catalog uh last in the past year and last semester, and I was taking this digital like art studio class, and kind of looking through your art and and the kind of concepts of the albums, listening to the records a lot. It, it did kind of provide like a lot of uh, inspiration on, on my side because I listen to a lot of music too, but I don't play music so to see like a music that also has this cool art catalog and just like really inspired me I actually did my final project for that class I did a like a kinetic type video using mammal <laughs> oh so, neat yeah, my, yeah and it was I have the to... highest grade I got in the class my professor loved it <laughs> oh that's great yeah that's that's a really um the the uh that kinetic art stuff is i have to say all the sort of after effects based stuff i think if if that if that existed when i was a kid i i would never have even thought twice about doing anything else i think that would have just been it for me and that would have been just like uh you know that would have been crack cocaine for me you know all, would all the old videos of they might be i yeah, just be kinetic type yeah it would just be like yeah type flying around it's it's just it's funny because i mean i know that world is there is a lot of stuff in that world now and the people who do it at the highest level are like it's crazy mm -hmm. what they do with it but yeah, it's um, hard i had to teach myself and it, i didn't even end up doing the whole song because it took a lot on my computer <laughs> right did you use after effects to do it? yeah so i used after effects and i originally had this like idea like i'm going to animate the animals going on with the song and it's going to be like so cool and then I realized it's a lot harder so I just kind of focused on making sure the text syncs in with the song and it transitioned and then I got a lot of like random videos that corresponded with the lyrics and kind of put them over it and 
right. mush them together. Yeah. Well, you know, there's this whole thing in 3D graphics where people buy frames, frames, like if you wanted a dog or something in, mm -hmm. in a video, in a 3D video, they'll actually just buy kind of that armature or whatever you call yeah. a 3D thing with no, with, that has no skin on it. So it can be like a dog or a cat or a bear or mm -hmm. a rabbit or whatever. And then, and then you just have this thing that already works that you can manipulate and you can make it walk across the screen or whatever, and you can turn it around and do it all. But like a, a lot of people don't, a lot of people, you know, real for real people in that world, they're building on top of yeah. ready-made components, which I was not aware of. I, I just was like, I always thought everything was done full on, you know, from the ground up. And it was like, no, it's not like that at all. Yeah, I think it's a mix because I, um, my school does offer 3D modeling, but I'm more in like the graphic world. So I don't really mm -hmm. do too much of the animation, but I do have friends that do it. And I think some of them, like I'm doing a senior project class right now and, and they're creating these worlds, like these virtual realities, like completely like using some ass assets, but making a lot of it by hand too. So it's kind of a combination of both. And it's a cool thing to watch uh from a kind of student standpoint to see these people making these worlds and doing things that like whoa yeah, yeah. well it's funny i'm not a gamer so like to, mm -hmm. I, I think like to people no, who are neither. gamers all this all this stuff is like so such old hat you know because like mm -hmm. games are those those worlds of stuff and they just take it all for granted and even if they don't aren't involved in on the design end of it it's like oh they you know they're just like worlds worlds ahead of us mm -hmm. but uh I don't know. It's it's an interesting stuff. I, I definitely uh, I, I love I love that end of things. Yeah, is it okay? Do we have time for a couple more questions? I know sure, it's 30, but I, I didn't oh, want to yeah. uh, take too much of your time because I have a few more here. I so I have a question um, because you guys have been making music so long, like decades before I was born, but then you uh -huh. also have fans. I feel like you have one of the widest range of fan bases. Like you have fans that have been with you guys since, you know, the, the Pink album. And then you have listeners like myself and even younger who had found your music recently, but it's it struck a chord. It has a connection with um, the young generation as well. Uh, what do you um, attribute to, what do you think, how do you think that your music has such a universal appeal? And as like an artist, how how do you, how, how does it feel to have such a wide range and how, know that your music is touching so many bases? Well, it's all really very flattering to be, just to be perfectly honest. I mean, it's like, um, you know, we when we started this band, in the early 80s, I don't think John or I really had any notion that it would like be our whole lives, you know, it's really, mm -hmm. the, it might be giants has just taken over everything in my life, which is kind of strange, you know, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a decision. And also, you don't, one of the things, I mean, you get the impression that you don't, you don't get to choose to be in a band for a really long time. Like, I think a lot of people would like their bands to keep on going. But for some reason, it's almost like, culturally, I mean, I don't know why bands break up. I, I you know, I, my band never broke up and I'm not really sure why. Um, I, I feel like I've seen bands, you know, we've, I mean, I've been in this band for 35 years. I've seen so many bands come and go, like come, you know, I've, and like the, the Pixies opened for They Might Be Giants. Like it was like, I don't know what show it was for them. It was probably like their fifth show. And I, it was a very unimportant show and a very unimportant night, nightclub in Jamaica Plain in Boston. And, uh, you know, they were just like another baby band. Like they made they made a really strong impression. It was like, these guys are like, well, first of all, they were the loudest band ever. And it was just I was like, holy smokes, you know, like these guys play really loud for, you know, for any band, just in an honest, you know, and then you know, a year later, they're just the biggest band in Europe, the biggest band in the UK, like they're, they're enormous. And then five years later, they're, you know, they're driving their tour, but there are two tour buses in opposite directions. And, you know, the band's broken up and everybody's mad. And, you know, like, it's just like everything's changed, you know, they, they, and, you know, so, and then time goes on and they come back and they're even bigger than ever. And, you know, I mean, just seeing things like that is just so different than like what we're doing is so kind of, just kind of chugs along in this very like oh, lo, low key kind of way. Like, I feel like I don't, we've we've gone from being like a bar band to being, you know, playing theaters, um, but it's all just been a very kind of a natural evolution. Um, 
so it's it's great it's great that we found an audience. you know when we first started playing it's funny when we first started playing at nightclubs in new york we were playing in these performance art places in, in the east village and all the audiences were kind of older than us which is a, put a really odd top spin on what we were doing like i felt like we were kind of playing for these sophisticates and i didn't i felt a little a little insecure about how what we were doing and how it fit in with them but they all seemed like very like amused by what we were doing in this very kind of genteel way um but uh it, it's just been a crazy ride i i, I don't think i have a, a i don't think i have the best perspective on it i don't know when we were working as a as a duo like like so I have no, I think I think it must have been a much bigger take it or leave it thing. I and mean, we're working with the drum machine. I'm sure there are people who saw our show and just thought we were some kind of weird fake band with you know playing along to drum machine. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think being in a band is a good is a good uh, perspective on on like I don't even know what kind of if if somebody described they might be giants to me. I'd be like I don't like that. That doesn't sound. <laughs> How, and I, I want to know because like how would you describe they might be giants because I've tried to describe it to people and like especially people in, in, in my age demographic and it's it's such a big like whippet, like repertoire of work and discography and there's so many different styles I do kind of um, right, I feel like right. each time I talk about it I use a different thing but how, how would you describe it to someone? well I mean I think I think the, the the thing that's weird about it is that it has the sense of humor. Well, when I get into a taxi cab and I'm carrying a guitar case, the taxi driver always says, "What kind of music do you do?" And I always say, "It's like original music. It's kind of like the Beatles, but it's got a, the but the words are 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 kind of crazy." And I feel like that's a pretty honest thing way to sum it up because John and I are writing songs in like the pop idiom we're writing songs that rhyme you know word lyrics that rhyme we've got songs with verses and choruses and sometimes bridges but like they're kind of but they're in that kind of pop music side of things and even though there's a lot of experimental music ideas incorporated and there's a range of rhythms and sounds um it's essentially still using the song format as like the jumping off point so it's like I think the I think the problem with describing it is that people end up thinking you might we might be doing like a pastiche of other styles, and um, you know we talked about this within the band like within the you know the side band that we record with and me and John trying to figure out how to sort of set things up stylistically because one thing that's different when we started as a duo we weren't you know we weren't we were okay musicians but we weren't like super competent musicians and when you're limited one of the great advantages of being limited is that you only sound like yourself. But mm -hmm. if you're like a really good musician, you can sound like a lot of different people and a lot of different kinds of things pretty effectively. Like the guys we play with, they can play, they could play any kind of music. They could be in a fusion band. They could be in a hard bop band. They could do, they could do all kinds, you know, whatever kind of music they wanted to do, they could do. So it's a much bigger challenge to kind of stylistically know what you you have to decide what you want to do rather than just do the thing that you know how to do when you're mm -hmm. in a in a really in a band that can kind of deliver on a, a lot of different musical levels so i think we kind of just speaking of the beatles we kind of take our cues from the beatles because when the beatles do a country song it's not like mm -hmm. it's not really broad like they don't like the ha, ha, ha. i mean i guess they do some a little bit but it's like but for the most part, if they're doing like a genre kind of thing, it's only dialed in a percentage wise. They're not doing like a musical parody of something. And, you know, I'm not like I, I got, you know, I I totally appreciate what somebody like Weird Al Yankovic is doing. But but what he's doing is just for in, in, immediate, the hardest comic effect that he can achieve. We're mm -hmm. trying to create songs that kind of hold up to repeated listening. We're trying to, you know, sometimes with lyrics and stuff, we're trying to get at ideas that are you know, you know more low key and, and personal to us. And um, and sometimes we're just trying to do things that are sort of beautiful and, and they happen to fall into, you know, stylistically between this and that. But um, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess, you know, it, we, 
we don't want to limit ourselves uh, stylistically. Mm -hmm. And um, and we it's not like there's one kind of music that is just the only thing that we love. Like a lot of musicians, you know, they grow up with some kind of music in their background that has a really strong pull on them. And they just like, you know, they it's they just dig deeper and deeper into that. And I completely respect the idea of somebody just wanting to be as authentic to how they grew up or what they their first love of, of music was. But, you know, for me and John, like, you know, we grew up with the pop radio in the 70s and, and mm -hmm. the 80s, and things were just like really wide open. You know, every, it was like disco into, into funk, into, um, you know, electronic music and, you know, craft work and whatever, you know, and all those things were on the same, all those things were the same. Like it was all pop music. Like Kraftwerk was just a pop band. Like you sort of think, like, mm -hmm. well, what kind of music is Kraftwerk? We just thought it was a kind of pop music. So there was just this, like, all everybody was, everything was uh, possible, and uh, we just kind of try to embrace the positive part of that. Yeah, and I, I totally think oh, the meeting is is expiring. It's ending a little bit, but I want to. Oh yeah, yeah, I see try to rev it up. But um, yeah, I think, you know, you're also able to just take it into so many different forms. And I even think like a big thing that some of the kids of my generation might know you with is like from your kids music. And even in like the kids music, you're not really like talking down to them. And it's just making music that is, you know, that kids can listen to, but also you're exposing kids to so many different styles and genres and ways of music that it's just normal music but it's like not inappropriate and I think like as a band to be able to have so much diversity and be able to do that I think is is super cool and you know even inspiring kids to get in, into music as a at a young age too I think that's super awesome well that's very that's very kind of you to say you know it, I think it's a real privilege as a writer to be invited into the world of a, of kids stuff you know it's like you definitely uh you know there's a lot of there's it's unlimited potential mm -hmm. you know you can just it's you just think about the what's good in the world of kids stuff and just how mm -hmm. transcendently cool it is um you know i just think of like dr seuss or um you know bugs bunny or what whatever you know it's like if mm -hmm. it's good good stuff that's you know good kid stuff charlie brown you know like any yeah exactly anything, anything like that you know it's just like if it's good it's actually kind of great and uh we were just very in, flattered to be, uh, you know, able to participate in that world. Yeah, all, all those records, even like, uh, I'm not the target demographic anymore, but I'll still right. listen to some of those songs. I just think they're great. Like the Triops has three eyes. That song is super catchy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a crazy one. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, I just want to thank you so much for your time and being able well, to talk you. to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm such a, a big fan of your music and uh, it really kind of inspires me as a creative and somebody who's in the graphic art world as well. And so to be able to talk to you for a little bit has been uh, such an honor. And I'm so- Oh, it's fantastic. You guys in Orlando, and I think it's gonna be a great show. And tickets are still available, right? I think, yeah, there, there's like only, there's like five shows left in the US mm -hmm. that have stubbornly refused to sell out. And mm -hmm. Orlando is one of them. So uh, yeah, get on out. Birmingham, uh, two shows in in Nashville. We shouldn't we shouldn't have put them both on sale at the same time. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, Nashville, not a big music town. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, we got we got a couple of shows left in the U.S. to sell out. But but we look forward to rocking you then.